Oh, Rotterdam. Remember the good old days in Rotterdam? It's hard to believe it's only been five years. I mean, it's already been five years since Roger Federer went down to Rotterdam to reclaim the number one ranking in the world, 2018. Remember that? Not quite enough points to get back to number one when he uh, won the Australian Open that year, his last major. Should have been last major 2019 in Wimbledon. But uh, he went down there to clinch it. I think he had to beat Grigor Dimitrov along the way. Someone who looks as smooth as Roger Federer with his strokes many times. Uh, take a look at this. This was one of the best match points you'll ever see in the sport. When you watch Dimitrov, it's kind of like... Oh, Excuse no me, that way. wasn't the match point. That was a little bit of... I think they're both stunned. <laughs> Nobody can believe it. A little bit of stunning <laughs> Dimitrov magic. Now, um, I'm going to show you the match point from earlier today that is a wowed and shocked the tennis world. But first, I just wanted to point out, uh, you know, I love watching Dimitrov. It's great to have someone with so much talent still. But every time I watch Dimitrov, especially if he's struggling more than usual, but even when he's playing pretty well, it feels like watching one of those Federer matches where Roger didn't quite have it all there that day, wasn't at his best, and kind of wins ugly, you know? Uh, winning it ugly for Roger includes hitting incredible shots like that one you just saw from uh, Grigor Dimitrov. Always a little bit of magic. Well, this was full of magic today in the match point against the Demon. Unbelievable. I mean, remember that, uh, that shot Federer hit behind him for? I think that one's better. The forehand behind him at the World Tour Finals against Djokovic. Remember that was, um, you know, a highlight reel shot we've seen for years. On match point, I think that tops it. That was one of the best highlights I've ever seen. You see the joy from, um, from Dimitrov. Speaking of magic, one hand backhand magic. You might have noticed in that uh, rally, uh, Dimitrov's got that nice biting uh, slice backhand. It was uh, one of those points he hits a, a nice biting slice backhand. Sitsipas, who crashed out of here. Doesn't have that, and uh, we'll look at that in a second, but first, take a look at this magical uh, one-hander. Stan the Man, a little nostalgia, is back in business. <laughs> and, uh, it, and is looking good. He's uh, going deep in this tournament in Rotterdam, so maybe we're going to get a, a pretty interesting final here. We'll see. Sitsipas is out. Yannick Sinner will be playing Stan uh, probably about right now. By the time you see this video, the match will be uh, already done, but I won't be able to shoot a video later today, so we'll do it now before the match. Anyways, we'll look at the draw and look at the matchups from Rotterdam, but and we'll also look a little bit at Buenos Aires because the last video or one of the recent videos I was talking about who was the other number one, year and number one, besides um, besides Andy Murray, other than, uh, you know, the big three? And great comment, Gary Leone from uh, Leone, is that how you say it, from southern, southern France? Uh, you totally forgot, Carlos Alcaraz exists. He was the other year and number one besides Andy Murray, and he has an excellent chance to win the French Open. Yeah, I, I would say that. Uh, it's going to be one of those Spaniards in Paris at the French Open this year, unless, of course, Novak Djokovic wins wins it and uh, maybe wins all four in the same year. Here's another comment. Uh, mentally, Alcaraz is way ahead of the others. And going back to uh, the last comment, yeah, it was kind of like, you know, Alcaraz disappeared at a bad time because we didn't see him for the rest of last year after his big uh, achievement in the U.S. Open, really. And we haven't seen him at the Australian Open. It's kind of easy uh, to forget. The guy totally disappeared. But don't forget Rafa, when he started making noise, uh, I can't remember if this is after he won the French Open, the first one, or before. But either way, it doesn't matter. Everyone knew that Rafa was coming. And then uh, he was kind of sidelined for a while. Maybe people could have forgot about him uh, with a fairly uh, serious injury. He was out for a long time. And uh, it must be before, because I think that was a lot of people thought he'd have a chance to win the French Open that year when he got hurt and he had to skip it. So maybe he could have won his first there. Maybe it was a good thing he didn't win that first. Uh, he didn't play that first French Open because he wasn't ready to win it yet and comes back the next year and wins it. Anyways, uh, Alcaraz for the next gen. Yes, he is the best and he is the other number one. My apologies for forgetting him. Rob Atkinson also says, don't like this one so much. Still think he won't win a major. Talking about Yannick Sinner. Well, he looked uh, pretty good against this year's Australian Open finalist as Yannick Sinner took him out easily, easily in Rotterdam. But Rotterdam is a special court. So let's take a look here. Let's talk about why Rotterdam is uh, such an interesting court. You know, it's the first 500 of the year. All right, who cares about that? But, um, you know, not, not every 500 is equal. Not every Masters 1000 is equal. Rotterdam is an interesting tournament every year. Uh, it's an indoor tournament. 
uh, you know, when we're we're not going to really see any more indoor tournaments for a long time until uh, we get to after the U.S. Open. So uh, that in itself is interesting, but also the way it plays. It's slow and it is low. Uh, and one of the things that helps is a nice biting slice like a Federer or Dimitrov. And it, look at that slice. I know. Oh, Take well a look done. at the close up. It's a good effort on He's the jammed on up the on the serve. I know that makes it a hard time, but that, that's all I got for you right now in footage. Uh, trust me when I tell you, Sitsi Pass, even though he's worked on it, even though clearly someone on the team or he himself is thinking it's a good time to hit that slice back in. Just from watching um, him in that match against Ruth Savori, and of course the, the match he lost with Sinner, seen a lot of uh, backhand slices that just sit up and float. It's astonishing. This guy is so good, uh, Sitsi Pass, had a chance to be number one in the world, had a chance to win the Australian. Well, he never really had a chance as soon as Djokovic was on the other end of the court. But, you know, he's up there at the top of the game. And the guy has a, uh, you know, uh, I would say. Comment below if you think this is insane, but I'd say I I think I have a better slice backhand. At least mine, I can make mine bite and stay a little lower than uh, Steph Sitsipas. Now Sitsipas is obviously where he is because of the big booming serve and the big booming forehand and um, you know some other things too. But let's just uh, let's just point out that this surface maybe not the best for Sitsipas. Do we read into this result too much? I don't know, but we definitely give a lot of credit to Yannick Sinner, who we talked about last time, being the closest of the next gen to the Joker. And this is a great place for the Joker. It's a great place for Medvedev. Look what he did to Felix Auger all day, Aliasim, who uh, was the defending champion here and is now out fairly early for a defending champion. Uh, you know, you see, oh, Felix Felix Auger hit uh, one more uh, winner on the, the winner's count, 12-1. to But look at that. More than double in the unforced errors. And on a slow court like this, this is a great place for a Sinner, a Djokovic, or a Medvedev, who you will literally get nothing by. Even though the... It's low. You need a, a nice slice to get some opportunity on a low court like this to finish. Uh, one of the things watching Dimitrov, I'll see he hit the biting slice, but then he won't set up for that forehand, taking it early and finishing right away the way we'd see Roger Federer. We see Dimitrov trying at times doing it, but not um, not clinical like Roger Federer would do with that. Particularly the slice backhand uh, going up the line. Uh, we'd see Federer hit that a lot, even against guys like Djokovic. You're kind of forced into a rolling. Maybe uh, you'll roll it cross. Maybe you'll go up the line. But either way, it's going to be weak, a little slow, and uh, kind of sit up. On a court like this, Felix Auger's uh, big, booming topspin forehand, uh, it's not going to jump up as much like it would on clay. Same for Sitsipas. It's going to kind of let it sit and hang a little longer. So good to be able to offset that with a really nice backhand slice. Anyway, so you see... What Medvedev did on this very slow court to uh, Felix Auger, uh, impossible to hit through. No surprise that Felix Auger hits a bunch of unforced errors. Now, let's take a look at Grigor hitting that deadly low slice against Hoobie Doobie, who he took out. Uh, one of uh, Dimitrov's victims here in Rotterdam. Right on the baseline. I mean, playing a, a, the right way, Hoobie Doobie on the uh, indoor court. And now, look how he has to, you can see the end of that backhand stroke. He kind of has to get down a little extra low. There's the one where you, you get a chance to rip. And again, like really having to get down low for those slice backhands. Here's another one. Especially low, backs him up so he can get like a little more time to set up for that low ball and get underneath it. Now, it's not like uh, Grigor takes advantage of one of these balls coming back from his slice to finish it. In this case, he takes advantage of mentally weak Hubi Hercatch in a uh, a very uh, yeah <laughs> in a very um challenging moment, you know, in the match in a tiebreak playing on match point. He just keeps the rally going. Great court to do that as well. I don't know if Dimitrov is going to be able to win this whole thing. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what he does with Medvedev, who uh, I believe he has up next. Uh, we'll look at the draw in a second, but I was just thinking about Hubi, looking at the Instagrams, and this guy. It's got to be the biggest nerd on tour. Um, could you, was the slippers, could you hold it up? Oh, that was pretty good. Come on, you cut it. He's got a teddy bear slipper. I spent uh, you know, a good, good couple I of hours. I spend all my time on the massage table. Cashews here, some. He's got a lot of German cereal. stuff in his bag. The Frühstück. Oat flakes. Frühstück. It's a book. Hey, it's nice about the, the Formula One. And uh, well, it's actually in Polish, so. so you're not gonna <laughs> all right, this is where it gets bad. <laughs> How do you know I'm not fluent? <laughs> Just, just a wild guess. The next item would be a hoodie. It's a hoodie. Cool hoodie. Do you enjoy fashion? Do you enjoy fashion? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like and then they show nice him in this uh, turtleneck well. dressed up as the full turtle 
who be her catch. But, you know, right when I found that, and I thought, oh, I got to make fun of him. He's uh, he's such a nerd in this video. I found someone who was even lamer. I think he's retired now. No Rubin, famous for that. Um, was it 2017 or 2018? Early round Australian Open against Federer. Uh, played a great match. Gave uh, gave Roger a tougher match early in the tournament when he wasn't quite uh, at 100%. Hey, guys. This is Noah Rubin here. Today, I am happy to announce that I am joining Scope as a U.S. ambassador. I'm super excited to join the adventure of Scope and be an ambassador of this community first project, which is building so a platform for which you corporate. guys, tennis fans, it's the young sports people fans, can trade cringe. NFTs with your selling? favorite athletes NFTs, and get access to get the, get the Get the heck out of here. Uh, uh, speaking of corporate and stiff, unnatural, look at what Sitsipas wrote here at the tournament. After he won his uh, Emil Rude Savori uh, first match up, Sitsipas said, winning the first round in Rotterdam is a testament. I'm never really tried a Sitsipas voice, but I think I could do it at some point. It's a testament to the city's dedication. I'm not going to try it right now. To excellence. It's people are hardworking and driven, and that energy is contagious. Uh, pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty lame, but... Here was a great comment I saw the other day. When criticizing back at Torino, uh, Curtis Torino, God, I don't want to sound like Noah Rubin. I better be careful with that. Um, back in Torino, in Torino, uh, <laughs> this is a great comment from the Torino video I did. Uh, and I totally agree with this. This is why I bring this up. Pinoy MN, maybe he's from Minnesota. Uh, anyways, he says, I enjoy Sitsipas. I, I enjoy watching Sitsipas too. He's kind of a treat, he's a treasure. For the tour, we need a guy like Sitsipas. He can be the bad guy at times. Remember, uh, after he lost to Rublev, the stuff he said about Rublev back in Torino, it's nice to have a little bit of drama on the tour. We we really uh, had missed that in the big three era of complimenting and loving each other. Although Djokovic did make that much more interesting, didn't he? Uh, I enjoy Sitsipas. I think the behavioral critiques against him, like those against Joker when he was younger, Meds, Kyrgios, are unfair. Eh, Kyrgios, he's getting closer to 30 now, and he's done some crazy stuff. But, yeah, maybe when he was younger. Uh, Etc. They're unfair because they're just acting like a lot of guys that age. Just be, just because it strikes me as uh, some is distasteful. I look at myself and other folks in our youth, and I accept it as a uh, rather common. And I agree. I've said it before on the show, but I'll say it again. I did dumber things, lamer things, more horrible things when I was young uh, than uh, than all kinds of tennis players we've seen on the tour doing uh, things like that. Anyways, um, let's move on. What do I have next here? So. We're talking about lame players, but how about this guy? He's a new guy, and I'm going to say he's kind of cool. You might know Wu Yi Bang for taking championships, ATP 250 trophies, right? But when you look at his Instagram, you don't see uh, super cringy stuff to make fun of. You see he's picking up the ladies. Check that out. Wu Yi Bang got himself a trophy and a lady. And I'm talking about a real lady. Not a, a plastic comes out of a, a box from a toy store Barbie doll like lady like some people on the tour have coming to a court and screen near you at Netflix. Uh, good thing uh, that that helped with the curse even more. Uh, oh, here's another one. Me and a fan. Me and a fan. And here's the best. Taylor Fritz. I don't want to say he's fake, but he certainly has a very fake girlfriend. And this is the kind of thing she says. This is great. From uh, the morgue's Instagram. I'm like so emotionally attached to this lip balm right now. <sighs> All right, that's enough making fun of everyone from the tour from the next gen. Wee Bing. Credit that they could be a sister for all I know. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, that's enough making fun of everyone on tour. Welcome to the show. I'm Matt. Uh, like I said earlier, we don't have a lot of time today because well, we can't wait for some matches to conclude and talk about them. But we can take a look at the draw and we can take a look at Buenos Aires really quick since we forgot about Alcaraz before. Um, Hello, Indian <laughs> Wells. Today I received good news for team great fans. Great message that I will get a I wide cut for the that US Open. It was the end of him. It was, I didn't Paribas think it'd be Open. like this though. It's unbelievable news for me uh, as it's a tournament. I love and it's going to be the first time I play there since I won the tournament in 2019. So looking forward to see you all there. Thank you. Zach cool. Um, let's take a look at this draw from Buenos Aires. Now there's Dominic team. Good thing for him. He got the wild card where the last time he was there, it's amazing. Remember in 2020, they canceled it. He wins the U S open in 2020. 
And at the time, we're thinking, like, the fact that Joker got pulled out of this tournament, yeah, it was Joker's fault, but also Rafa's not there, Roger's not there, and it just sucks for the tour because you know, like, all right, Joker was so going to win it this year. I mean, he was such a lock. That was one of the biggest locks ever for Djokovic to win a tournament. And uh, team kind of wins this asterisk U.S. Open. And I say, you know, if he doesn't have more big results after this, especially, like, if we don't see him beating a Joker or somebody, you know, some big names... Uh, it's going to kind of be asterisks, and it, it's, uh, yeah, it's even worse than that, right? I mean, I feel bad for Dominic Team, and I really hope he can have a breakthrough, but it wasn't here in Buenos Aires, so we'll take a look. Carlos Alcaraz takes down one Serbian, Laszlo Jera, and he has to take down another Serbian in Duzan Lajovic, Duzi Lajovic. Uh, Shorty D, we talked about him last time. Uh, his dad's not been well health-wise, and it's really wearing on him mentally. This game is so mental. We talk about it all the time. It's taken Shorty D out. He keeps keeps losing everywhere. He lost to uh, into everyone. Zapata Morales, he lost to him. Is that right? Is that who it was? Yeah, 6-1, six, 6-3. Six, uh, so I like Alcaraz to come through to this final. He looks pretty good from what I've seen a little bit. Uh, Musetti's looking good here. There's another guy who's going to be good on clay. Uh, and Scam Cam Nori's there. Now, where was Dominic Team? He lost uh, a la Shorty D. He lost to a qualifier. He beat Alex Molkan. All right. Good for uh, Dominic Team to get a win. But uh, he loses to, who is this guy? Juan Pablo uh, Pervarilas. Pervarilas. Uh, anyways, so Dominic Team out early. Uh, let's move on to the better draw, the more interesting one. It's just got more players who are all up in the action. Uh, Sitsipas out to Yannick Center. 6 4, 6 3, ouch. I mean, Center played outstanding and just blew Sitsipas off the court. Um, maybe that's not the best matchup for them on that court. So I don't know how much to read into it, but center stock is je- definitely going up. And uh, I'm stunned to hear anyone say he'll never win a major. It's hard to predict, though, who is going to win a major. Maybe it'll be like the women's tour and everyone will win one major. Who knows? Uh, Stan Vavrinka up next for Yonic Center. Stan Vavrinka up next for center. Hit the music. We're going to get out of here. I feel like we just hit the music to intro. Don't worry. Uh, I'll have more for you talking about Rotterdam, special stuff. Uh, Anyways, but can't do that now. Got to get going. Have something very important coming up. More on that later. Anyways, um, (laughs) Vavrinka gets center next. I'm going to go with center, but Stan has looked amazing. That Gasquet match was fun watching the two one-handed backhands, and Stan was just on fire. Maybe this is his time to finally get his groove back. Um, Nice story below that for the Dutch. You would have thought it'd be uh, Reithoven, Tim Van Van Reithoven. You would have thought it'd be Robotic uh, van der Zander Schulper. But uh, those guys, Dutch guys who have had big results, right? Van der Zander Schulper in the majors. Uh, Reithoven winning, uh, what was that, the ATP 500 or something last year. I think it was a 500. Beaten uh, at the time, I think. He beat Medvedev, who was number one in the world at the time. Anyways, we get Bowser <laughs> and uh, Talon Greek Spore. Greek Spore. Uh, so they're there taking out who we wanted to watch, Sasha Zverev. It's going to be a while, folks. Zverev, uh, he's got a new ankle, practically. Anyways, um, so Greek Spore and Browsers, Bowser, we'll see how they do. Holger Rooney also. Oh, so disappointing to see Holger Rooney and Sasha Zverev go down so early at such an important tournament. Uh, moving to the bottom of the half, Medvedev has been very impressive. Uh, took out Felix today. We already know that. Uh, Grigor took out the Demon. Of course, I'm going to take Medvedev over Dimitrov, but I'd love to see Dimitrov do well here. I would especially love to see Dimitrov in the final. Anyways, uh, and we'd love to see Sinner there too. Or Vavrinka, two uh, nostalgic one-handed backhands on the five-year anniversary of Roger Federer coming to such a wonderful little town, Rotterdam, full of dams, just south of Amsterdam. They got a whole lot of goddamn dams there. Uh, on this five-year anniversary of Roger Federer there, nice to see a couple older fellas with one-handed backhands doing so well in the damn Rotterdam below Amsterdam. See ya!